Hey, it's Yuka. Recently, I shared that I have been loving using DaVinci Resolve on the M4 iPad Pro on threads and gotten so many great questions and people just being curious about what the experience is like. So in this video, I wanted to go over the tips that I found for you to do more on DaVinci Resolve on iPad. DaVinci Resolve on iPad came out in 2022 and it was a huge deal. And of course I tried it when it just came out, but honestly, it did not become a daily driver for me for a couple of reasons. First reason was that the app actually looks like it only has the cut tab and the color tab. And I say looks because we can add the other tabs back in and I'll show you how to do that in detail later. Another reason could still be true with older models and chips, but the app crashed a lot and it made it pretty frustrating to use. But I think with the M4 iPad Pro, it's become so powerful and the stability of the app is much more reliable. Lastly, I did not know I could set up my Blackmagic Cloud to sync to the iPad Pro seamlessly. So I thought I had to do a lot of manual work to have the files working on my Mac and iPad. We'll get into the details of this too later in the video, but I also have a video where I talked about how to do more with your Mac and iPad together. So if you wanna check that out, it's over here. Once I realized those things I thought were holding me back could be easily solved, editing on DaVinci Resolve for iPad is now one of my favorite things to do on the iPad Pro. First of all, let's talk about setting up Blackmagic Cloud. Blackmagic Cloud has been a game changer in my editing workflow and it's a cloud subscription by Blackmagic, but it's only $5. I think it's absolutely worth it because it allows you to access your project files from anywhere, from your Mac, your iPad, your iPhone with Blackmagic Camera, and even from someone else's device if you want to collaborate together. This also works if you have multiple iPads, multiple Macs that you use, and they can all be synced. It's absolutely amazing. Once you have signed up, it acts like your own project server and you will be able to access it from anywhere. You can also choose to use Blackmagic Cloud as your cloud service or Dropbox or Google Drive to sync your footage. In my last video, I showed you how to add Dropbox to your iPad, but that is what I do. I keep my working files on Dropbox and I have the Dropbox and Blackmagic Cloud shared with my editor and my other Macs. So when someone makes a change, on any of their devices, it automatically syncs and perfectly up to date when you open it from another device. Now let's talk about DaVinci Resolve itself and how you can make it do more. When you open up DaVinci Resolve for iPad, you will notice that there are only two tabs, but do not get discouraged by this like I did. It's just hidden by default and you can add them back. So this is where keyboard shortcuts come in handy. If you press Command Option K, this will come up. This is exactly the same as the desktop version, which is great. First, you will wanna to go to the workspace section. You can search here if that is easier and you will find workspace and then you will find show page right here. Here you can add a shortcut to open each of the tabs. Color and cut is already there. Deliver, edit, Fairlight, fusion and media is hidden. I don't really use media, so I didn't add anything here, but you can obviously add if you want. And then it needs to be a unique keyboard shortcut. So it can't be like a generic command D because command D is used everywhere else. So I was doing command option shift and then N M comma dot. So I can just boop, 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 boop every time I open it. Now that I have this set up, I can add those back in with these shortcuts. So now I have my edit tab, fusion tab, color was already there, Fairlight is here, and the deliver page is also here. It is now really similar to the desktop version. Other shortcuts I like to set up is Q and W for ripple edit. I also changed the timeline zoom in and zoom out to just plus and minus. I also have current frame as still to control A. And I use these shortcuts on the desktop version as well. So I can seamlessly work without having to like mentally switch depending on the device I'm using. I really like the Magic Keyboard for iPad, but you can just pair any Bluetooth keyboard too. 
Also, Blackmagic's speed editor can be connected to the iPad via Bluetooth, and the new microcolor panel has a little slit where you can put the iPad in. I personally have been a hardcore keyboard shortcuts girly, so I don't think I need these, but the mini color panels are very intriguing. Now that you have all the environment set up, let's talk about installing your favorite titles and effects. What I love about this is that the process for making this work on your iPad is exactly the same as it is for a desktop. You can just go to your files app and download or airdrop whatever files you need for your iPad and then drop them in the appropriate folders. Add on my iPad, DaVinci Resolve, and then go to, if you wanna add a LUT, go to the LUTs folder. Um, let's try adding something new. I think this has not been added yet, so I'm adding this here. I have two Lutify.me LUTs in here. In the Fusion folder, I also added some templates, some fonts. You can even add DRFX files. They're basically like effects, I guess. And when you do this, you might need to restart your DaVinci Resolve app, but for LUTs, if you go to the color page, if you do not see it in here, you can of course add a new folder if that's easier to find. Let me do that actually. So in the LUTs folder, I am going to add a new folder and going to name it Yuka so it's easier to find. And I'll put these two LUTs in here. And then in the LUTs folder, I can right click and then refresh. So now I have the Yuka folder here so I can add this LUT here. And yeah, this basically is exactly the same as the desktop version. So if you do all of the things that I just talked about, you will notice that the feature parity is actually insane. Blackmagic has been doing a really great job with their software and hardware, to be honest, and it's really awesome to see. That being said, there are some limitations to the iPad version, even with the paid studio version, which is priced at a one-time payment of $94.99 in the US, which I think is actually a pretty reasonable price since it's a one-time payment and you'll get all the updates in the future. And most people probably don't even need the studio version, which means that they can use all of this for free. I actually haven't updated to the studio version on the iPad. I'll need to pay for the studio version when I start to export my 4K videos on iPad. But for now, I was just doing some work on the iPad and then going back to the Mac to finish it up and exporting on the Mac, which I have a studio version of. So currently I still haven't had the need to upgrade, but I'm happy to upgrade when I need to. So going back to the limitations part, I found a PDF for all the features that the iPad version do or don't have, and I'll have it linked below, but it's from DaVinci Resolve 18, and the PDF was published in January of 2024, so I'm curious to see if they have any updates on this list for DaVinci Resolve 19 or for the M4 iPad Pros specifically. For example, one of the things that the iPad version cannot do is use plugins that require installing software. If you are using plugins that you needed to install from like a DMG file on a Mac, these will not work on iPads simply because iPad OS, similar to iOS, doesn't allow you to download software from anywhere else other than the App Store. So it's pretty much a limitation that comes from iPad OS, which is kind of a bummer. Motion VFX did something really interesting where they have an app called M Installer on the App Store. And I tried it out and they're just actually downloading title files, transition files, etc., to the right folders in your files app, just like I showed you in the last section. This is a really clever way nonetheless to let users download files easily, but this is not technically a plugin that can be shown within the UI. Scripting doesn't work either. The keyboard shortcuts has a section for scripts, but I could not get it to work on the iPad by setting a keyboard shortcut and replicating the file structure on the iPad files app. I hope this was helpful for you. And if you have any other questions, let me know in the comments. 
my workflow might not be exactly the same as yours. Like I barely touch Fairlight and have very limited knowledge on it. So I might have missed something there. So if you find anything interesting, let me and others know in the comments so we can learn from each other. Although there are some limitations to the iPad app, this is hands down the best pro iPad app that is actually useful in my personal workflow. And it could be for many other video creators out there. So I'm excited for you to dive into it. Okay, so thanks for watching till the end and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. I'm having the time of my life. Everything is going all right. Oh, I just made them look twice. This is how it feels when you live in a good good life. I'm just living a good good life.